cluster seizures are when we have more than one seizure in a 24-hour period. Um, status epilepticus is sort of continuous seizure activity as defined by greater than five minutes or a failure to recover between subsequent seizures. In general seizures, we think about intracranial, meaning brain problems, extracranial, meaning organ problems, or of course, idiopathic. The emergency intervention for these patients, we need obviously, if they're actively seizing upon uh, presentation, IV access and administration of a benzodiazepine is gonna be the treatment of choice and certainly step one. We've got some doses here for you for diazepam and midazolam. Repeat those as needed up to three times until you have cessation of seizure activity. And then obviously, once the seizure is stopped, you can do your physical examination, particularly as it relates to checking their body temperature, because hyperthermia is certainly a risk here with prolonged seizure activity. And then obviously launching into blood work, baseline blood work and, and your analysis, um, considerations for evaluating both the calcium and glucose, if there's any consideration for hepatic involvement, bile acids and pneumonia. If the patient's on phenobarbital or potassium bromide, evaluating where their drug levels are will also be a good thing to get submitted right away. What if the seizures don't stop? Repeat your benzodiazepine for up to three doses. Um, if we're not getting the answer we need there or the response we need there, IV Keppra at sort of a loading dose of 60 mg per kg IV is, is certainly a consideration. Alternatively, uh, phenobarbital in four mg per kg boluses could be considered. Only word of caution for phenobarbital is it's a little bit of a longer acting medication. So don't expect an immediate response to that bolus of phenobarbital. So some folks will give a dose and not see a response in 30 seconds and give another dose and do that over and over. Uh, be careful because once it does catch up with them, they they may be you know quite out of it and we might run the risk of an overdose. So if we're using phenobarbital, we need to certainly give it some time to work. As a very last resort, if you can't get the seizures to stop with kind of versions of multiple doses of benzodiazepines, Keppra and phenobarbital, um, certainly propofol is a absolute last resort. Um, we should aim to never have to do this, but in the sort of last, you know, worst case scenario situations, um, it, it does have a, a time and a place, but it's far and few between. Don't forget about the need for, you know, intubation, critical monitoring, et cetera. Um, generally, we want these patients to be on a concurrent midazolam CRI because there's a, a reasonable risk that the propofol is kind of reducing the outward symptoms of the seizure. But if we had an EEG on that patient to actually look at their brain waves, we may not be sort of actually resetting those, those brain waves the, the way that we sort of in, intend to. So concurrently giving a midazolam CRI is going to be a wise choice. And then obviously, unless we think it's a toxin or something that's going to be, you know, very quickly fleeting. Um, you probably want to load your maintenance anti-epileptic drug while they're anesthetized and before they come off of that CRI so that when you do start weaning off of this, you know, they've got some type of maintenance seizure medication on board so they don't go right back into seizures. Likewise for cluster seizures, both for in-hospital and at-home management, um, having a toolkit for these clients such that when the patient, if they're a patient that's known to have cluster seizures, when they have excuse me, when they have one, if they're known to have, you know, two, three, four seizures in the same day, we need to give them a, a toolkit after that first seizure to try to decrease the odds of that second, third, fourth seizure, which obviously would then necessitate hospitalization. So having a toolkit where they can give intranasal midazolam at home if they're, of course, comfortable using some caution because we're near the mouth parts and a dog that's not going to be mentally appropriate. Also using chlorazepate, a slightly longer acting benzodiazepine, for three days or so can help kind of break that cluster cycle. Also, I'll often use Keppra as a, as a pulse therapy, kind of giving an extra dose of that. That combination of midazolam, chlorazepate, and Keppra is often quite, quite common. And of course, keep them on their maintenance medications during that period as well.